Big industrial inventions in the 21st century are made by research and development teams at enormous corporations. They don't come out of somewhere like this, a traditional workshop and foundry that can still be powered by steam sitting in a rural town in Australia. And yet. A screw is a very simple machine. It takes rotational motion and turns it into linear motion. So you can rotate this screw, the stuff down there will get picked up, and friction will stop it falling down again right away. That's called a vertical screw conveyor. And you'll find something like this in factories around the world for lifting and moving bulk powder or grain or sand. What would happen if instead of rotating the screw, you instead kept it still and just rotated this cylinder around it? My guess when someone showed me this was, well, nothing. The cylinder will just rotate in place. It's just a, a cylinder with a couple of scoops at the bottom. If you're confused by that, so was I. The old name came from Cornwall. My grandfather came out in 1868 at 18 years of age. Dad made his first engine, a steam engine, in 1906 when he was 16. In 1925, my older brother was born. He's still going. And uh, <laughs> I came along in 1930. We served an apprenticeship under our father unofficially from when we were kids. We try to keep up with the times as much as we can, but using traditional methods. Just before Christmas, I think 2003, we had this new mixer that we'd bought. It was twenty odd thousand dollars, and we had it set up where we were going to use it. Nothing seemed suitable for the elevation of the sand up to the hopper over the top of the machine. And I woke one morning, three o'clock in the morning, with this crazy idea and made a sketch of it and uh, went back to bed and went to sleep. And the next day I came to work and I said, I've had a thought about making this and oh, no, no, that, that won't work, they said. And I said, well, we're gonna try it. It was only a matter of days or a week and uh, we had the first little machine operating. We drove it with an electric drill. We set about making a decent machine then and we put it in the foundry. It did the job, amazing. People were coming to have a look at it and I realized we should put a patent application in on it. This was so different, I thought it would be easily protected because uh, rotating the casing instead of the, the screw, you can see that it's different. We spent a lot of money on patent coverage and the name Old's Elevator has been applied to it. They're made in America and Holland and France and Spain, and <laughs> you name it. With this elevator, it's a full flow and there's no movement of air virtually except what might be between the particles of sand. So there's really no dust generated by the machine, only where it falls back through the open air. This is also a very important thing where you're handling dusty, explosive materials. Corn dust is highly explosive. Sugar, big explosion in USA a few years back and it, it demolished the refinery. The clearance between the inside of the rotating tube and the screw allows product to go through it and not be damaged, not crushed. It's a very forgiving type of machine because it can be in very poor condition and it'll, it'll work. It's been found that it's a more accurate vol volumetric feeder than a lot of the devices that are being used. This took a while to get my head around. Visually, rotating the cylinder instead of the screw is very different, but from a physics perspective, it's really not. If you rotate the screw, it looks like each level in there is moving upwards, but that's just an illusion. It's just rotating horizontally. Stuff gets lifted because as the screw rotates, the particles at the top of the pile are shoved out of the way, and they prefer to take the easy route upwards through air instead of pushing the heavy bulk below out of the way. When you rotate the cylinder, exactly the same thing is happening. The buckets underneath force the particles to go somewhere, and when they're pushed into the screw, they take the easy route, up through air, and the next ones do the same, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and everything keeps going up and taking the easy path. It is counterintuitive, and look, I am trying to not make this be an infomercial. I've checked, and yeah, this is being used all over the world now, from food handling to solar power towers. This is a good new way of lifting bulk stuff. So. What I really don't understand is, through the 20th century, a century of industrialization and automation, how did no one spot this earlier?
I don't know why somebody else hasn't thought of it. In the USA, they were calling me Archimedes too. <laughs> it's different, it's useful, and if, if it helps people, well, that's great. Thank you to Peter Olds and all the team at Olds Engineering. You can find out more about them and about the Olds Elevator at the link in the description. I am going to have to give you a hand clearing up this bird seed. Ha, ha, ha.